Hey, what's good fam? It's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. If you could do me a favor before we begin this video, help this video get to 500 likes. We appreciate you guys more than you know. When you talk about the Alabama defense going into the 2022 season, clearly you have to talk about the two edge rushers returning for Alabama's defense, William Anderson and Dallas Turner. They were a monster tandem last season. I can't even imagine what they're going to do this season. When we spotlight William Anderson up at the top of your screen when he was a sophomore this past season, 102 tackles. He had 17 and a half sacks, 55 quarterback hurries. And honestly, it was a travesty that he wasn't mentioned for the Heisman Trophy conversation because I think overall, you take away William Anderson from this Alabama defense, Alabama is not making the national title game. I want to get your feedback inside the comment box. When you look at Dallas Turner, 30 tackles last season, eight and a half sacks as just a freshman. Big reason why Drew Sanders hit the transfer portal. And look, Drew, Drew Sanders, I think he's going to do a great job for Arkansas. But I think with Dallas Turner coming back, clearly you got William Anderson and you have Dallas Turner one and two. I think it's going to be one of the best one-two punches on the defensive side in college football. Okay, next let's talk about the Alabama safeties that are returning. Now, with Jordan Battle and DeMarco Hellams each returning to the 2022 season, that is some added veteran experience coming back for Alabama. Look, these guys were vets in 2021. Think about the experience that they now have going into this next season. Let's spotlight a couple of these guys and, of course, talk about the star position players as well, Brian Branch and Malachi Moore. But let's start at the bottom of your screen talking about DeMarco Hellams, 87 total tackles last year. And I'm sure you know this, but DeMarco Hellams, pound for pound, probably one of the hardest hitters on Alabama. You also return Jordan Battle. He's been starting since his freshman season. We've seen a lot of Jordan Battle. Really excited that he's coming back for his senior season. 84 tackles last year. He was targeted 32 times, only allowed 18 receptions. He had three interceptions, three touchdowns allowed, and he played an incredible 964 snaps. Now let's go back up top. You have Brian Branch and Malachi Moore. I know a lot of people want to see more of Malachi Moore, and we're probably going to see um, more of Moore in 2022, but Brian Branch had a monster season. He was playing at a very high level, 55 total tackles, and then you look at Malachi Moore, uh, 17 total tackles. So Either of those four, whether they're going to be safeties or the star position, I think Alabama clearly set at that position and a, a very talented group in that safety spot. Now let's talk about the corners for Alabama going into this next season. The biggest news um, on the defensive side transfer wise was the fact that Alabama added Elias Ricks from LSU. You're talking about an immediate impact player coming to Alabama already enrolled, ready to go. Who's going to be that other corner for Alabama with Jalen Armour Davis um, declaring for the NFL draft? You have Kool-Aid, Jaquincy McKinstry. We got to see him um, really a lot during his freshman season. And then you have Kyrie Jackson coming back. So I think when you go to the spring season, that's probably going to be a position battle that we look to. And I'm curious to see how Elias Ricks comes in and fits in on this defensive side. But at, when you look at the safeties, the star position, and the corners, I think that Alabama is certainly going to have one of the most dynamic defensive back units. Called it the no-fly zone going into the 2022 season. I know a lot of people want to see a lot of improvement for the defense, uh, especially in the secondary. So let's see how those guys progress this season. Now, let's talk about the inside linebackers. And Henry Toa Toa coming back for the 2022 season. I think that's an added benefit, especially with Christian Harris uh, leaving to the NFL. And then you also had some other guys transfer out. You had Shane Lee transferred out to USC. Um, and then a couple other guys, uh, you know, leaving. But with Jalen Moody coming back and took his name out of the transfer portal, I think that's important for Alabama. And I think Moody is a guy that really... To be honest, I think that he could have played these past couple seasons, and he did play. He played on special teams. He spot played at the inside linebacker position. But him coming back, I think, is going to be an added benefit. When you look to players that are really going to rise up, I would spotlight Moody. Of course, Henry Totoa, 112 tackles last year for Alabama. Other non-starters that I think we're going to see more of, uh, Deontay Lawson, uh, Ian Jackson, uh, Kendrick Blackshire, and maybe some of those young guys coming in from the class of 2022. Let's also talk about... Um, the defensive line going into this coming season. And the defensive line, there's a lot of names to keep track of. So this is one unit that we're going to watch going into 2022, especially that spring season, kind of see which guys are starting to rise up. But Byron Young coming back uh, last season, 40 tackles. You also have DJ Dell. Seems like he's been here for an eternity, right? Uh, last season, 18 total tackles. He's that big guy, uh, run stuffer. And then you have, I think Tim Smith is going to be a, a breakout guy on the defensive side. I look to him and Moody um, 
is in terms of guys that you're going to hear more of. I think Tim Smith is on the verge to becoming a really, really dynamic defensive lineman for Alabama. And, and look, we didn't see a lot of him last season. Uh, probably tough to get on the field with a couple guys ahead of him, but Tim Smith, watch for him. Uh, Braylon Ingram, Jameon Latham, uh, Jamil Burroughs, Justin Abogbe. That could be a, a name that we see a lot of this coming year, especially with the exit of Fideri Mathis. Monkel Goodwin, I think he's going to really rise up. And then... Um, uh, as mentioned, Jamil Bros, we even have him twice on the screen down here. Uh, so he's going to make a, probably a monster impact. Um, let's look at um, Pete Golding. And Pete Golding, it's interesting because you didn't hear a lot of uh, fire Pete Golding as the season went on. You kind of heard more of fire Bill O'Brien, right? Bill O'Brien kind of took that away. But Pete Golding, here's his uh, resume at a glance. And I want to get your take. What do you think about Pete Golding, um, who's been in Alabama uh, you know, for four seasons now. And in 2020, you see that the defense led the SEC in scoring just 19 points per game. In 2021, the defense led the SEC in sacks with 58. Uh, the coaching timeline, as you can see way back in 2006, Delta State all the way to the present, where he is now Alabama's, um, you know, inside linebacker coach and the defensive coordinator for the Crimson Tide. And you look to the, the box on the, on the right of the screen, the overall defense, number seven in 2021, number four in 2020, number six in 2019, number six again in 2018. So since he's been here, how do you feel about the defense? I know there's kind of, it's kind of been a roller coaster of emotions, but Nick Saban clearly, you know, believes in Pete Golding. Otherwise, he would have made changes a long time ago. So going into the season, once again, Pete Golding has a loaded defense to work with. I want to get your take on Pete Golding inside the comment box. My name is Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. Please help us get to 500 likes on this video. We really appreciate you guys being a subscriber. 72,000 strong right here on BamaInsider.com. We'll catch you with another video as soon as possible. Reporting to you from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com.